What's up, everybody? And welcome to the SBL Season 2 and our Week 2 battle against our defending champions of the SBL, the Kerry Caracostas and head coach Arctis. Now, last week we got up to a pretty good start, defeating our cousin Rock and the Jacksonville Jirachis by a 3 0 scoreline. And last week, Arctis didn't get off to the best of starts as he lost 3 0 to um, Acheron and the Pittsburgh Celeste Steelers, I believe is his team name. He's one of our new coaches. But yeah, this week is a new, a new week and a new battle and a new opponent. So last season, in the regular season, Arctis lost to us in the regular season, then defeated us in the playoffs on his way to the championship. So this is really kind of kind of going to be the rubber match, I guess, the the all-time series leader match, if you will. Now Arctis this time he has a he has a very weird but threatening team. Let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. This team consists of last season's MVP Mega Charizard X, Landorus T, Toxapex, Chansey, Metagross, who is his Z captain, um, Rotom Heat, um, Verizion, um, some other tier 4 thing that I can't remember off the top of my head right now, Zatu, Zangus, and Thunderous Incarnate. Arxus was the only person that did not franchise anything, and I'm actually going to try to see if I can figure out what Arctis's other Pokemon is without messing with the thing, but... but regardless, what I'm expecting Arctis to bring, I definitely expect to see a Mega Charizard X and Landorus T. I fully expect to see probably Metagross and Rotom Heat. And his other two at that point. It could really be anything. It could be his two tier fives, honestly, because I could see Zatu and Zangus putting out a decent bit of work. Or I could see um, his two tier twos as well, Toxapex and Chansey, because those two are just so bulky and so hard to take down. And if I know Arthas, last season he he kind of over-prepared for my Mega Aggron, which in some sense is kind of left him vulnerable to the rest of my team, in some sense it kind of didn't. But I have a plan for him this time. There's a couple of surprises in store with my team. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to my team. Alright, this is what we're bringing. We are bringing Garchomp, Mew, Wipered, Lantern, Arcanine, and Vaporeon. Wait, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Wait just one second. Where in the world is my Mega Aggron? Yep, that's the first surprise here. This is the first in SBL history. For the first time ever. Mega Aggron will not be appearing in the Deante United battle. And this is partly for the reason that I said just a second ago. Because looking at Arctis' team, he could easily over-prepare for Mega Aggron. Like, he has so many threats against it. The Charizard X, the Lando, the Rotom, Verizion, maybe Zangus to an extent, because I know Arctis has gone to, to some dramatic measures to defeat my Mega Aggron, even as far as special Mega Garchomp, um, Spec Zoroark, uh, let's see, Final Gambit, um, Zangus. Yeah, that's Arctis for you, but let's see how much he prepared for my Aggron, only to find out, hey, I didn't bring it. So, let's get into the Pokemon I actually did bring. Alright, we're starting with our Garchomp here, and Garchomp is a rather tanky set this week, the famous Tank Chomp. And he's rocking the Rough Skin Rocky Helmet for all that residual damage. And he's rocking Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Dragon Tail, and Toxic. Now, the move Toxic, I kind of debated back and forth between a couple of moves. That would be Toxic and Brick Break. Brick Break I had thought about just for the Chansey and the, um, what's it called, the Zangoose. But after doing a couple damage counts, I figured out that Earthquake actually did exactly as much to Chansey as Earthquake. So there's really no point in me bringing, um... The other move as well. Brick Break. And plus, I don't really see Arctis as the type to set up screen, so I just went with Toxic because, you know, all that residual damage. And the Dragon Tail works in combo with the Stealth Rock for some more for momentum purposes and for some Switch shenanigans. And, you know, Arctis Pokemon just take more and more from Stealth Rocks as they switch in. And physical attackers, they take damage from the Ruskin Rocky Helmet. Now, with this. EV spread here, 240 HP, 220 defense with an impish nature. 
I believe I will be able to take at least one hit from Mega Charizard X if I absolutely need to. And then either kill it with Earthquake or switch it around with Dragon's Head, which might also kill it because Zardex is also a Dragon type. And then the rest I just dumped into attack because I didn't really feel a need to put it into anything else, like speed, because let's say I would have put it into speed. Let's see, what would that have been? 250? I don't think that, that speed is anything significant, so we're just going to leave it like this. All right, that's going to be our guard shop. Let's go on to the Z Captain, who is still not running a Z move. He's running a Cobra Berry this time, and he's a more defensive spread as well. Mew here is rocking the Defog, the Thunder Wave, the Roost, and the Knockoff. Knockoff is basically just there, so I'm not total taunt bait. <laughs> basically. The Culver Berry can work well in tandem against the Landorus, because that way I can tank a knockoff pretty easily and then just roost off the damage if I need to. Um, let's see. Max HP, uh, kind of split defenses, that's kind of, that was kind of my point when I did my little speed creep. I actually don't remember exactly what I speed crept, but it speed creeps something. Oh well. It'll work out okay. Alright, and Mew's gonna be my defogger because he's the only one of my Pokemon that I brought that can remove hazards. Thunder Wave is just there for slowing stuff down. That's not named Rotom or Lando. And then Roost is there for longevity, and Knockoff is there to knock off items. And I really want to knock off that Chansey if he brings it, because Chansey without the Eviolite is so much less bulky and it's beautiful. So yeah, Mew's job is pretty straightforward and I hope he comes through for me. Alright, next up we'll go to one of our season debutantes here. Our Lifer, who is Cheshire. This is going to be pretty much a standard set for whenever I bring Lifer, but I might change it around once or twice. Alright, he's rocking the Focus Sash with Prankster and he's running Taunt, Encore, Knockoff, U-Turn. Lifer is very likely to be my lead in the battle. As I can anticipate a Stealth Rock lead and just go for a quick Taunt. Like, oops, you can't use Stealth Rock. Oh wait, you want to use a different move? No, you're encore into not being able to use Stealth Rock. And so at that point, that forces switches. It's like, okay, let me U-turn up out of there real quick as he switches. And that gains me the momentum. So I, so I think Lifer can be very useful in that regard. And Knockoff is there for both stab and for knocking off items. Like, if I can get Lifer in against Chansey, that would be honestly my ideal scenario. Just because Taunt shuts down a lot of what Chansey can do, and then Knockoff shuts down Chansey's defenses. So from there, it becomes a lot easier to defeat the Chansey with, say, my Garchomp, as he's really my only main physical offense. I mean, maybe Lifer can do a little bit, but we'll see. Yeah, you, you might notice that minus Lifer and Arcanine that we'll get to a little bit later, this is actually a pretty defensive team. It's not the first time I brought a defensive team against Arctis, but we'll see how it does. Oh yeah, and the EV spread here, the 208 speed with the um, Jolly Nature, Outspeeds all his base 100s, which um, I think is Charizard. Um, anything Charizard and below, I believe. He might have something else at that speed, but who cares. And then the rest of the EVs here, I kind of just put them wherever. I did kind of have max HP and then the rest of the attack, but then I lowered the HP to put a little bit more into attack. I don't really know if that, if that does anything significant, but we'll see in the battle. <clears throat> Take a drink with Rick. All right. Now we will go ahead and move on to our Lancer, who is rocking the Shuka Berry, and Scald, Volt Switch, Ice Beam, and Heal Bell. Now, with that HP and defense investment and the Shuka Berry, Lancer will be able to take one Earthquake from an adamant max attack Landris T, and then be able to kill it back with an Ice Beam. Which, I, which I think being able to kill with Ice Beam is where the 128 EVs with Modest Nature came from because I believe that is the minimum I need to guarantee a kill on um, I don't remember if it's an offensive or a defensive Landorus but I think it'll do some justice yeah Heal Bell is there just in case of some more um, Toxic Spike shenanigans like with the Toxapex I could just Heal Bell lock or, or eventually I can defog him the hazards away with Mew and Arctis's only hazard control himself is the Charizard X, which gets access to Defog, even though very few people ever run Defog Zard X. Although I have seen it in the SPL. As well as... Oh shoot, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, his other hazard control option is the Zatu 
who also gets access to Defog, but it's not compatible with its better ability, which is the Magic Balance, which is the more important thing here. But yeah, we'll just see how that goes, and that's going to be our Lancer. Now, I'm actually going to skip over Arcanine for now, because his set is Heat. So we'll go ahead and move on to our other season debutante, Ariel the Vaporeon. Really standard stuff for Vaporeon this week. And this is his job, her job, excuse me, is very, very simple. Just get some Skull Burns if you can, pass some Wishes off, and then Toxic some stuff. Get that residual damage as much as you can. And yeah, the EV spread is relatively standard for Vaporeon. I figured I'd even out the defenses as much as I could, and I actually did that. And then with Vaporeon's massive HP, makes it easy for him to take hits. So yeah, from my own personal experience, I know Vaporeon is extremely hard to take down, and I hope that's exactly what it does for me in this battle. And the Baton Pass, I chose that over Protect because I felt like being able to get the slow Baton Pass over to something else to heal its HP was more valuable to me than being able to Protect off. Although it might be a game time decision whether I put Protect over Toxic because I also have Toxic on Garchomp. But we'll see. Alright, and now we're going to go to our Arcanine, and this set is my main offensive output this weekend. Yeah, it's it's going to do some work, I have a feeling. We are running Weakness Policy Agility Arcanine. Now, with the Intimidate and that HP investment, I will be able to take an Earthquake from a Lander's T, well, once it's Intimidated, and be able to set up an Agility and pop my Weakness Policy and then Wreck House, basically. I chose these moves, Flamethrower, HP Ice, and Dragon Pulse because I felt like they had pretty good coverage overall against this team. The only problem with it is I will need Chansey either dead or severely weakened by the time I get Arcanine to be able to sweep. And I will also need Tox Effects either dead or severely weakened to the point where I can tell it look like oh, say, Dragon Pulse. So yeah, his two bulky things are my crutch, basically, for Arcanine. But yeah. The Flamethrower is general stat, HP Ice is mostly there for the Lando, it could also hit the Zatsu and the Verizion, although the Flamethrower also hits the Verizion, so forget that last part. And Dragon Pulse is there for some neutral coverage against most of his team because he does not have a fairy. And it's also coverage against the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Charizard X, and that's my main way of hitting that. So Arcanine, I expect you to be my cleaner, and we'll see how that goes. And so yeah, that is going to be our team, our Mega Agron less team against Arctis and the Green Bay Pachirises. Oh wait, not the Green Bay Pachirises, oh my gosh, I'm dumb. The Carrie Caracostas. Dang it, Ark, why did you have to change your team name? Actually, why did everybody change their team name except me and Mega? Actually, you know what? I'm not going to complain about that. It's going to be a good battle. Ark's a good battler. He just had a slip up last week, and we'll see if we can slip him up again. Alright, and with that, I will see you guys next time. We have returned with the battle here. Alright, as you can see, Arctis decided to bring the Metagross, the Rotom Heat, the Mega Charizard X, who is pre-Mega because custom game, the Verizion, the Chansey, and the Zatsu. Okay, first things I noticed right off the bat, no Landorus, which I was both happy and sad about. Happy because, well, it's a threat. Sad because I was kind of looking for Landorus to be the thing that Arcanine set up on and the thing that would pop his weakness policy. But, oh well. Uh, he didn't bring Zangoose, which was nice. He also didn't bring the Magneton, which, stupid me, couldn't remember that in the Team Builder. Yeah, the Team Builder and this battle were... are two separate recordings, but it's okay. Two separate days, actually. Actually a week apart, because I did my Team Builder early, but we did our battle late. Like, as of the recording of this video, I recorded this on Wednesday, March 29th. We actually did the battle on March 27th, two days prior. But regardless, let's just see how this battle went down. Let me put this on normal so, you, so it's easy for you guys to see. Alright, I said my plan all along was to lead off with Lightbird, and that is exactly what I did. As he led off with his Zatsu, which I kind of expected seeing it on his team. And I didn't go for Taunt because I knew he had the Magic Bounce, so I just went for the knockoff. It did a whole ton of damage as he set up the Reflect. And then the second knockoff was able to kill him, and that Reflect is only staying there for 5 turns because I knocked off his White Clay. And he went to the Zardax, I expected him to set up, and that's exactly what he did as I taunted. And I wanted to Encore him into that Taunt, I mean, that Dragon Dance, so he wouldn't 
be able to do anything at that point. But he was smart and he decided to switch out into his Verizion, which... Eh, could have been better, could have been worse. I mean, it's not, a, it's not the end of the world that I didn't get the Encore or Charizard X into a Taunted Dragon Dance, but... Oh well. So I let him bring me down to my Sash here. Because I knew I could live one hit, and I went out for the U-turn, just to get off some damage, as he revealed he was a Life Orb Verizion. Which was good information for me, as I actually went into my Garchomp here, and not my Arcanine, because I wanted to try to save the weakness policy if I could. And as he switched into Rotom, I was content to just set up my Stealth Rock, no, a Toxic, excuse me, and on the next turn I set up my Stealth Rocks. As he revealed, he had the Hidden Power Ice, and spoilers, this is a Scarf Rotom Heat. Eh, kinda cool tech. So he switched, to, expecting me to switch, and he switched into his Metagross, as I switched into, I believe, the Lantern. Yes, that's exactly what I did. As I went for the Skull, maybe time for a little Burn Hacks, and... He missed the hammer on him, and Arctus, let me just say this right now, I am so sorry for the luck you have with 90% accurate moves. Which, if y'all don't know, hammer arm is a 90% accurate move, and Arctus has had horrible luck with this 90% stuff recently. Last season, he missed the pivotal Sacred Fire against Crimson in, like, what was it, week 5 of last season? Last week against Acheron, I believe his Rotom missed an overheat, and now against me here, the, the Mega Man X Metagross missed the Hammer Arm. I mean, the Hammer Arm, I guess, didn't really make much of a difference, but but still, just that, just the luck with RNG is. Just, I'm sorry for that, Arctus. But regardless, we move on. I went for another Skull, and I believe I get to burn this time. Yes, I do. As then he used the Hammer Arm, it would have done twice that much had he not missed, had he not been burned. And Beth this year would have been in a worse position as I went for the Volt Switch here, kind of expecting him to switch, as I believe I went to my other one, in fact, Vaporeon. And Vaporeon was sitting here ready to wall stuff. So he went for the Bullet Punch just to get off some damage as I finished him off with a Scald. Yeah, just remember Vaporeon's offensive capabilities for later in this battle, because it might come into play. As he sends out his Rotom here, and I'm like, okay, I don't really want my Vaporeon to take that yet, so I switched into Vetfish as he actually went for the trick. So now we're sitting here, I have a Choice Scarf Lantern, and he has a Shukaberry, completely useful, uh, uh, what's it called, Rotom Heat. And it's not like I'm carrying Thousand Arrows or anything on this team, unless I was carrying Metronome Mew, which, as you know from the team builder, I wasn't. <clears throat> So now, our items are completely useless, so let's just see how that ends up playing out. Okay, he switched out directly into, I believe, his Verizion as I went for the Bolt Switch, knowing I was Choice Scarf. And then I switched into my Garchomp, just trying to get some Ruskin Rocky Helmet damage off on him. And he went for the Leaf Blade, that did not kill me somehow, even though he's Life Orb, I mean, I'm very defensive, but still. And then I went for the Toxic. Then I ended up switching out my Garchomp because I didn't really want him to die like that. So I believe I switched him to Mew because he was my other defensive Pokemon on this team. He went for a Stone Edge, actually. Did a decent chunk. He took some life form damage, then he died to the Toxic, which gave Garchomp an indirect kill for the season. And then out came Rar, the big bad Megazard X. Yeah, he's, he went for a Dragon Claw, just did, did a decent chunk, so I went for the Thunder Wave. And by that point, Vaporeon was just ready to come in and destroy everything. And he, as he got para-hacks there, as, on the switch in, the Skull did a nice 42%. That's coming from little old Vaporeon. Remember, it's a Pokémon mostly used as a defensive Pokémon, but that base 110 special attack, I told people not to sleep on that during the season. I mean, yeah, it's neutral damage and it's uninvested special attack. I don't really know, I don't really remember exactly what he was running for a special defense investment, or if he even had a special defense investment. Actually, no, nah, it, it doesn't matter. I don't want to reveal what he told me because I told him I'd keep it a secret. So I will do just that. So, yeah. And then the next turn I set up a wish as he went for another Dragon Claw. And knowing I was faster, I could get off another Scald and just kill him there. And then as the wish came down, I could get back up to full health with the combination of that and the leftovers, so I was free to take a Volt Switch from the Rotom or any electric attack for that matter, as I believe he actually went for another trick, because I think at this point, I think at this point he was actually kind of giving up. And it was kind of depressing to see, because 
I don't know. I guess it was kind of inevitable that I would win the battle at this point, but still kind of disappointed to see Ark just kind of give up like this. But he owned up to it at, after the battle. Like, he, he felt bad about it by the end of the battle, but I made sure I reassured him. But regardless, I was able to knock off the Rotom with a Scald, and that's three kills for Vaporeon right now. By that point, he was down to just his Chansey, so all I had to do was click Toxic, and that was pretty much game, because at this point, all he did was spam Counter, and I'll go ahead and do this to Fast, since that's really all that happens left. So I kind of passed that from you, and I went for a knockoff on the next turn, just wanted to get off his Violite. And then because Chansey's HP is so freaking huge, he actually killed me with a counter, so it's not a 6-0, and I was kind of glad about that, because I didn't want this to be a 6-0, because I didn't think it needed to be. And really, I just sent an Arcanine just so he could get some screen time. Flamethrower, I didn't expect to kill, but the Toxic did. And the battle ended with a massive 5-0 victory for DNC United. Now, I believe Arctus kind of felt a little bit rushed for this battle, and I guess I'm partly to blame for that, because it was... It was Monday, I was waiting for the battle to happen. I expected it to happen by the weekend, but it didn't, but it's okay. And I guess, yeah, Arctis is, has been a lot busier this season than last season. Like, his excuses last season were just general laziness, but this season I know he's actually busier with real life. And so that's kind of contributed to his, I guess, his early season struggles so far. I don't know if I'd really call this a struggle, but... If anyone can make a good bounce back, it's Arctis. I never can. But yeah, next week we take on Meep and his new team name, the Monahan Magnezones. At least I think it's Monahan in pronunciation and not Monaghan, like it's spelled. But regardless, look forward to that, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.